Good morning, I'm the Reverend Stephen Page from St. Patrick's Anglican Church. This month, our images for the daily radio devotionals are taken from the world of sports. And with the pennant races heating up this time of year, let's talk baseball today. Now, Kirk Gibson is currently the manager of the Arizona Diamondbacks, and he's doing all right. He managed them to a surprising playoff berth last year. This year, though, they, they face tough competition, actually from one of the teams he used to play for when he was a player, the Los Angeles Dodgers. In fact, Gibson is remembered for a clutch home run that he hit in the 1988 World Series. So let's go back to 1988, before all of the latest rounds of baseball expansion, back before the, the Expos moved to Montreal, 1988. And I want you to imagine the scene. It's the World Series. The L.A. Dodgers are at home, but they're playing against the powerful Oakland A's. Oakland has the best record in baseball that year, with 104 wins. But Los Angeles had Oral Hershiser, winner of that year's Cy Young Award, as the top pitcher, and they also had Kirk Gibson, the league MVP that year. But it looked like the Dodgers would have to do without Gibson for the duration of the World Series. Gibson was battling the stomach flu and had also injured both legs in the Dodgers' tough seven-game series win over the New York Mets to reach the World Series. He had a, a pulled hamstring in his left leg, and his right knee was swollen and sore. And so when Game 1 started, Gibson dressed in his uniform, but he didn't even go into the dugout. He stayed instead back in the trainer's room, getting some extra medical therapy. Well, in the game, Los Angeles took the early lead, but Jose Canseco blasted a grand slam home run for Oakland in the second inning, and that put Oakland up 4-2. to two. And the game continued. And then by the bottom of the ninth, Oakland still held the lead. They were up 4-3. And they sent future Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley to the mound. He was out there to nail down the win for a one-game lead in the series. They would win the first game and lead one game to none. So Eckersley started off, and he got leadoff hitter Mike Sosha to pop out. And the next batter struck out, so that's two down. And uh, Mike Davis came on to pitch, pinch hit for the Dodgers. And he managed to draw a walk from Eckersley. So, for the Dodgers, the game-tying run was finally on base. And then, to everyone's surprise, Kirk Gibson came out of the dugout to pinch hit. He clearly was in pain. He was hobbling. He was flexing his legs repeatedly. Longtime Dodgers broadcaster Vin Scully said on the NBC TV broadcast that Gibson was shaking his left leg, making it quiver like a horse trying to get rid of a troublesome fly. Now, Eckersley quickly got in front in the count. He got ahead, no balls, two strikes. Gibson then laid off the next two pitches. They were just outside. Eckersley was trying to get him to swing at strike three. Uh, but that evened the count at two balls and two strikes. A foul, another ball, and now the count was full. Three balls, two strikes, two out, bottom of the ninth, Dodgers down a run, at home, game one of the World Series, an injured slugger at the plate. <gasps> this is the stuff of Hollywood drama, and everyone held their breath. Well, Eckersley came with a, a backdoor slider, and Gibson, using really only his upper body strength, since he couldn't rely on his legs for extra power, he swung and he hit the ball up, up, and over the right field fence for a home run. Now, at this point, it didn't matter how long Gibson took to hobble around the bases first to second to third to home, because the game was over. Dodgers win! After calling, she is gone, Vin Scully, the broadcaster, then said nothing for more than a minute. He just let the picture tell the story to the TV audience of this dramatic win. It was actually Gibson's only at-bat in the whole World Series, but it inspired the Dodgers to defeat the mighty Oakland A's four games to one and win the World Series. Now, Gibson could have stayed in the trainer's room seeking treatment. No one would have thought poorly of him for not playing in the game given all of his ailments. But he knew that his team needed him, and he got off the bench, and he got into the game, and it made all the difference. Now, sometimes in our Christian life, we are tempted to remain in the peaceful safety of our bench or our trainer's room, to stay huddled in our churches or in our own lives and concerns and affairs. But God wants us to strap on the cleats, to venture into the world, to participate 
in the lives of others, to share the good news of God's love and of Jesus Christ with those all around us. And one of the ways that we bring glory to God is when we perform acts of kindness in Christ's name, when we share words of encouragement with a friend in need, when we visit the sick or the lonely, when we invite someone to come with us to church and meet Jesus, our friend, our Lord. Our Anglican churches have what we call the five marks of mission. They are five general ways that we can join God in the divine mission, from telling others about Jesus, to lovingly responding to human needs, from working against injustice, to creation care, and more. Come and see us to learn more about these marks of mission. But those are the Anglican marks of mission, which really apply more broadly, and every church in town is engaged in God's mission in the world. We just need our teammates to come off the bench and to get into the game. Will you join us? For St. Patrick's Church, I'm Stephen Page.